In this video, I'm going to show you how I created this sci-fi apartment using Blender, Substance Painter and Unreal Engine. We are going to talk about efficient kit bashing workflows, quick and easy texturing in Substance Painter that doesn't involve any manual unwrapping. And finally, we are going to make the scene come to life using assets from Quixel Mega Scans and custom decals in Unreal Engine. So let's get started. Part 1 the block out. Designing interiors is fairly easy as long as you follow a few very simple rules. One of them is that the scale and proportions have to be correct. If the ceiling of your room is only one and a half meters high, the average person couldn't even stand in it. So the first thing I did was to import a model of a mannequin as a size reference. I found this one on Sketchfab, but you can use whatever you want. The room itself started as a simple cube that I scaled to my personal liking. I didn't use any measurements and I didn't look up the standard ceiling height because this is sci-fi and as long as it looks good and makes kind of sense, it's good enough for me. If you ever struggle getting your rooms or panels look like sci-fi, just bevel one edge and usually you instantly get that sci-fi look. I knew that I wanted the window to be the main point of interest, so I placed it right in the center of my scene. If you want to bevel vertices instead of edges, simply hit command shift B instead of command B. To make the window a bit more interesting, I gave it a little frame and some more layers using insert and extrude. I deleted the glass part of the mesh as I knew I was going to add that in Unreal Engine. The room felt a bit small, so I decided to extend it. This made it much easier to find nice looking angles for rendering the scene in Unreal. And even if I didn't include the parts of the room in my render, it still forced me to think a bit more about the scene and where to add details. Again, I simply beveled some edges to give it that sci-fi look. Another rule of modeling interiors is to make it look like people actually live and work there. And one thing you need for work is a desk. I simply duplicated an already existing face of my mesh, scaled and extruded it, and I had a desk in no time. Again, using a human reference is key as it's very easy to get the height of the desk completely wrong. Even though it's sci-fi, I added two legs to the table to make it look a bit more familiar and easily recognizable. Part 2. Panels. After completing the block out, it was finally time to add more details to the scene. I didn't want to use any sci-fi panels you can get online for free, instead I decided to make my own little kid bashing set. Making panels in Blender is actually super easy, but as always, knowing where to start is a bit tricky. To not get lost, simply look for reference photos online, find panels you like, steal the elements you like and ignore the parts you don't. As mentioned before, extruding and beveling is the way to go. To make the panels look a bit more real, I decided to add cylinders that at least from a distance look like balls. At this point the temptation to just make one or two panels and instantly add them to the scene might be quite overwhelming, but trust me, the more panels you make, the better it's going to look. I created all of my panels in a separate blend file, so even after I'm done with this project, I can always come back to it later and add more panels. This is one of the many things you can do if you feel the urge to create something, but you don't have the time to start a completely new project. Now, of course, you could texture these panels right away, but in my case, I didn't because I wanted to choose the look for my scene a bit later. And to be completely honest, also to give the tutorial a better structure. If you don't want to spend the time modeling the panels yourself, I'll leave a few links to free kit bashing sets in the description below. Adding the panels to the block out was super easy and probably the most satisfying part of the project. It adds so many details in just a few seconds and since this is sci-fi and these panels don't actually have any sort of function whatsoever, you can do pretty much whatever you want. Part 3 Lights Adding practical lights to your interiors is another great way to make your render look more realistic. You can either use simple immersive materials or, if you want to go the extra mile, use photos of real lights and use them as an immersive map. I made this texture using several photos of different lights that I photographed over the past few months. Most of them are located at my local train station, but some of them I found at restaurants, museums or even at home. Again, this is one of the things that you really only need to do once because you can reuse these textures or even the final assets as often as you like. Using simple cube projection, I made several lights and panels that I decorated all over my scene. Now it was time for part four, texturing. 
I wanted my panels to look a bit used and scratched and even though I'm sure there are actually ways to do this in Blender, I prefer using Substance Painter. If you are like me and you don't want to pay for a subscription, there is a license on Steam that requires only one payment. The updates are limited but for what I do, this is more than good enough. I exported the model as an FBX and imported it into Substance. As mentioned before, I checked the auto unwrap feature. For more complicated models, it might be better to manually unwrap your models, but in this case, it worked just fine. Now, before we can actually start texturing the model, we have to bake the textures, so Substance knows where all the edges and crevices are. Again, it's super simple as you just have to click on the croissant at the top of the screen. Choose the desired resolution, in this case 4K, and click Bake Selected Textures. Now sit back and have a break because this might take a few minutes. I want my textures to be mainly white, so I added a fill layer, made it almost white and turned down the roughness. In real life there are no absolute values, so never go fully white and never max out the roughness. For the scratches I added another fill layer, but this time made it black and increased the roughness as well. I want the layer to be only visible at the edges, so I added a black mask to make it disappear. Then I added a generator and chose Metal Edgeware. I played around with the settings until I got something that looked convincing. Now it's easy to stop here, but I wanted to make the apartment look a bit more used, so I repeated the process, but this time I used the dirt generator. Again, I played around with the settings until I got something that I liked. I exported the now unwrapped model as well as the textures and imported them into Blender. If you've already unwrapped your model in Blender, you might only have to export the textures, but I didn't, so yeah. Back in Blender, I reassembled my models and exported everything as an FBX file so I can import it into Unreal. Part 5 Unreal Engine. I dragged and dropped all my assets into Unreal, reset the location, and set everything to movable. With all my assets selected, I hit this icon to place all of them into a new folder. This way I stay organized and don't have to scroll through the outliner to find my models. Even though the workflow between Blender and Unreal is quite easy, I still had to fix a few materials. I re-imported some of the textures and set all the shaders to two-sided so the light from outside doesn't shine through the walls. Then I added a few rectangle lights and placed them all over my scene. I also created a material instance for the practical lights that lets me control the brightness. Since I didn't have the time or patience to create an entire city, I thought I'd use Adobe's new AI image generator for that. If you don't have an Adobe account, I recommend checking out Playground AI. It's free, easy to use and the results are actually quite usable. I still wasn't convinced so I decided to use Adobe Firefly. Compared to Midjourney, the results are okay. Obviously, Midjourney is going to give you better results. But for the purpose I'm using it for, this was actually more than enough. Back in Unreal, I added a simple plane, dragged the image texture onto it to create a new material, set the shader to unlit and plugged the texture into the emissive slot. For the window glass, I added another plane and this time I used a pre-made asset that I got for free from the Unreal Marketplace. It's called Animated Rain, Water Drop Material and Effects and currently costs around 20 bucks, but in my opinion, it's absolutely worth it. Once imported, just drag and drop the shader onto the plane and you're done. The apartment was still too empty and lifeless, so I decided to add elements from Quixel Mega Scans. Plants, boxes, books, chairs and even carpets. These things add so much because I think even in the future, people will still like to decorate their rooms and make themselves comfortable. In addition to the decals I got from Quixel, I also decided to make my own decals to add a personal touch to my render. For this, I simply used Photoshop and made a few warning labels and stickers. I exported them as PNG files, created a decal material for each of them and placed them all over my scene. Looking back, I think I might overuse some of them, but here we are. A common trick by cinematographers is to add haze to a room to add a layer of depth. This volumetric effect looks very cinematic and is very easy to create in Unreal. Simply add exponential height fog, set it to volumetric and play around with the intensity of the fog as well of your lights. Lastly, to add an element of motion, I added a hologram to the desk. The hologram is a free asset I found on pixabay.com that I converted into a PNG sequence. Create a new image media source, import your sequence and press open to preview. Now simply drag and drop the asset into your scene, 
place it where you want it and hit the open button in the details panel. To set the blend mode to additive, scroll down and open the material. To add more controls, change the parent material to media plate CC. Now change the blend mode and play around with the exposure. And that's it. I hope you liked this video and if you have any requests on what I should do next, feel free to tell me in the comments. Until then, feel free to watch either this or this video.